Hey everyone, we're back with part two of the GraphQL language features tutorial series. In the first part of this tutorial playlist, we explored operation names and variables. And in the second part, we're gonna look at another feature called aliases. So here's where I left off in graphical on my development store using a named query along with some variables. Next at work for working at scale are aliases, which are in a nutshell, a way to rename the data that comes back. Notice here how the fields, the actual literal fields names here, so product, title, and description are exactly the keys that come back uh, in the JSON response to this request. So I see product, title, and, and description. Aliases are a way to rename those. Here I could say, just for the sake of demonstration, my super cool title, colon, and then the actual field name in the schema. So now when I hit play, I get this structure back. I'm actually requesting this field, but I'm saying to GraphQL, rename the key of that field to this. Now that's okay, you can do some light transformations with aliases, but where they really shine is when you want to be efficient. And the principal place that you would do that is when you want to request the same field multiple times within a single request. I'm gonna get rid of this alias for now just because that's not particularly useful to this application, let's say. I've got this named uh, product title and description. I'm gonna get rid of the variable syntax for now just to show you this hard coded. It'll just be, we'll just isolate aliases on their own. So I'm gonna get rid of object name entirely. And I'm gonna kind of go back here and substitute back in uh, just this direct, this very direct way of doing things. Okay, so now I'm kind of back at square one. I get this product's title and description. What if I wanted to get multiple products in the same query? There are multiple products whose, I, whose IDs I know, and I want to get more than one. Well, what I'll naively do here is I'll copy these fields, I'll paste them down here, and then I'll substitute in a different value for a product here. Okay, so I have to know that this is another product and I'm gonna hit play on this query. And I'm gonna expect a bit of an error here. Let me just make sure all my syntax is good. I'm gonna fix that and I'll hit play. So what this is saying is, hey, you did the field product, but you supplied a different argument each time you called it and you're not allowed to do that. If you're gonna supply a field, the arguments to that field had better be the same. Now it would be very redundant if I just, you know, supplied this exact block with the same ID twice. That's not actually what I want. I want I want two product IDs in the same request. This is where aliases come in. So I can name aliases whatever I want to. Just for the sake of demonstration, I'm gonna give them very silly names. I'll call this product one, and I'll call this one product two. And now I'll hit play. So now I've actually been able to use the product field twice with different arguments because of aliases. So in the first example, I showed aliases as just a simple field rename, but their key use at scale is preventing collisions so that you can essentially make multiple requests in one request, or more specifically, you can query for the same field more than once in a single request. And this, is, this can be very efficient at scale because no longer do you have to make a, a single network request every time you want a product by, by ID, which can lead to a lot of waiting time. But let's say in an example, you needed a product and you had manually curated a number of recommended products. You probably want to pull all of those products at the same time. Aliases would allow you to do exactly that. And this is their key use. Thanks for joining us so far. In the next section of this tutorial, we're going to be looking at another GraphQL language feature called Fragments. Mm -hmm.